everybody. Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. My name is Chris and I make a full-time living selling stuff online. Today, I want to talk about giving yourself a $15,000 raise. Um, I got this idea from I Will Teach You To Be Rich from Ramit Sethi's book and Audible is now a sponsor of my show. So if you want to go to the description below, you can download Ramit's book for free in a free Audible trial. And if you continue uh, or you just cancel and keep Ramit's book, I still get paid, so I appreciate if you guys do that. It'll help me keep this channel free. Um, also, um, one of the main points that Remit makes in the book is that you can negotiate a raise at your job, um, and that most people who are wealthy usually have a high-paying job. They're not entrepreneurs. You have a much higher chance of becoming wealthy if you just have extra money to save, and most of those people who have extra money to save end up being the people who are entrepreneurs and start their own business because they have extra money to put into it. I think many of you are running into capital issues, but if you have a high paying job, you can. it's sort of like the rich get richer. So how do you negotiate a $15,000 raise? Why aren't we asking ourselves this question as resellers? So what does that translate into? For us, it's 300 bucks more per week. Um, and here is the problem that most people do, and I'm gonna go over. There's really only two things you need to do. 99% of people who listen to this channel, only two things you need to do more. You need to list more consistently and you need to buy better. Those are the two things. It's not listing more, it's listing more consistently and it's buying better. So let me give you guys an exact example of what I did to increase my income and actually reduce the amount of time that I'm reselling. I can now make more videos on YouTube and I'm making more money reselling because I have more time and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So let me give you an example. Let's say you resell for 40 hours, right? And you were doing what I was doing, which is just buying lots. So giant orders of stuff coming in, then you process it. So I was spending about eight hours looking for lots to buy and 32 hours processing, listing, shipping it. Um, that was my week. 32 hours of basically, I call it eye bleeding work where you're stuck grinding it out, right? You're gritting your teeth and trying to do it. So I changed that. That was a $10 uh, minimum threshold for profit. I changed that to a $20 threshold for profit, but I doubled the amount of time that I am sourcing. Actually, more than doubled. But So now I'm spending 16 hours a week looking on OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, um, thrifting more, and being more selective because when you want a $20 profit, it eliminates 99% of things. So you're doing more time being more selective. Now, spending twice as much looking for items time-wise, but I'm spending half as much time processing it. So instead of 32 hours of processing, I'm only processing now for 16 hours plus 16 hours of sourcing, now making the same amount of money in 32 hours instead of 40 hours and a much cleaner existence. I'm literally, there's half as many items in my store. Now, what I found is actually it wasn't just doubling it from $10 to 20, it's more than that. I'm actually almost getting a $30 average profit per item because I'm, I'm having more time out in the field. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily scalable. I'm just presenting an option for people who have limited time. Um, if you spend the majority of your time learning what to buy and um, really honing that skill, plus you develop a consistent listing habit, this is important, you can't just be a good buyer. So let's say you have the habit of listing 10 items a day and that's $30 profit. Almost anyone can learn to list 10 items a day, but can you find $10, in, uh, uh, 10 $30 items per day to earn a six-figure income? That requires some skill. So if you're not spending your time learning how to do this, you will never get there. And so this is something that I really want to talk about because most people, this is... um. Remit Sethi's quote, most people love to argue minor points because it absolves them from actually having to do anything. So most people like to stalk people on Instagram, see what's selling, eBay conspiracies, um, looking for other people to complain to. Their schedule, they do that probably eight hours a day. Um, they don't spend their time looking for stuff that's profitable, um, better items, better sources, and listing consistently, that's not in their schedule. If you were to ask people, when do you normally list? When do you normally research items? They don't know. But it's like, hey, when do you check Instagram? As soon as you wake up, religiously, every day, the last five years. People, people will tell you when they use social media, but they can't tell you when they're actually doing some product research. So 
I actually am making more money now working less and I have the opportunity now to do more YouTube videos and explain um, some different concepts that I'm reading from different books and giving you some book reviews. Plus, because Audible is a sponsor, you guys can get these books for free, at least one, and um, just start on that path of less but better. And that's another book I recommend, which is Essentialism, um, which is fantastic. It's the discipline pursuit of less but better. Okay, back to Ramit Sethi. The single most important thing you can do to be rich is to start early. Um, I totally agree with this. And this is what he preaches is automatically improving, automatically investing, getting that stuff into your accounts. This is going to be what I see. A lot of people um, are talking about experience matters in reselling. Kind of. It's not how old you are because I know eight-year-old resellers that are more advanced than 60-year-old resellers. Like Just because they haven't been alive very long, doesn't mean they don't have the consistent habit of listing and finding goods. And when you are in elementary school, you are like in a target market incubator. All your friends are buying the hottest toys. You're right in the, the age, you're right in the consumerism, right in the heart of it, surrounded by all these people who are buying things. It wouldn't surprise me to see a six figure reseller that's in junior high school. That doesn't surprise me actually. As long as you know um, the basics of how the platform works, they know what sells because they're constantly with their friends. Okay. This applies. Um, I'm going to go over the key messages of if I will teach you to be rich. And then you guys can tell me in the comment section below if you agree with this or not. Um, he says focus on 85%. Getting started is more important than becoming an expert. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't started investing or you haven't started reinvesting profits, start with $1. If you're in debt, borrow an extra dollar and invest that dollar. Um, that's from T. Harv Ecker, but just get into the habit of watching the amount that you invest into your company grow. Um, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you get started. Uh, I 100% agree with that. Ordinary actions will get you ordinary results. That's true. If your schedule looks the same, why would your results be different? So you have to drastically change your schedule if you want to drastically change your results. Makes sense. Don't touch your system once it's set up. I agree. Um, the top reseller that I know um, goes to 50 stores per week looking for goods religiously. He's done it for, for a decade. So can you do that for a decade? Can you do the same thing for a week and not, I'm sorry, for 10 straight years and not deviate from it? That's really the main difference. Consistently listing and consistently going. This same person also has a rule of trying to list every item within 24 hours. So imagine that. No death pile um, or money pile. I call them death piles because, let's be honest, that's money that's not earning you more money if it's just sitting there. Um, okay, next is spend extravagantly on what you love and cut back relentlessly on what you don't. So his example is, you know, I think he spends $50,000 a year on a personal trainer because he really wants to be in shape and he spends $10,000 a year on clothing or he loves clothing. But, you know, he and his wife have a Honda Accord. And they don't eat out because they don't care about that. They'd rather just cook a small meal at home. So, so you know, if you want to make some sacrifices, you may also want to think on the other side of what would you extravagantly spend on. That's more exciting. And I will make another video on fat fire versus lean fire. When I hear um, lean fire, which is like living as cheaply as possible and as frugally as possible, that's cool. Um, but then fat fire is more what I want to do because I like living in a big city. I like the convenience of being able to walk around. And mainly, I like the ambition of the people who live around me. That's irreplaceable. I would, I would pay an extra twenty dollars or $30,000 a year just to be around people who are trying to accomplish more. You see, you just see a lot more living in a big city. And I personally like that. Um, that being said, I can see the merit of van life and the living like a vagabond and just being out on the road and such little expenses that you can, you know, save 200 grand and retire forever as long as you just drive around in your Prius and um, don't eat too much protein because meat is expensive. You can retire probably when you're 25. If you just don't go to college, get a job, um, earn $200,000 in five years by um, being frugal and increasing, getting a $15,000 raise each year. You can be done working at 25. No, no one presented that plan to me when I was a kid. So hopefully, if you guys are watching this channel and you're younger, you could be lean fire and um, 
retire at a very, very, very young age if you just um, do what Remit says and cut back relentlessly on what you don't care about. Okay, here's the six-week plan. This is awesome. This is Remit's six-week plan to um, get you started on your path to getting rich. First thing is learn how to improve your credit score. Um, this you know, He has a lot of tricks and hacks to go and call your credit card company, get those fees reversed, lower your interest rate, increase the amount that you can borrow because that leverage is going to help you purchase a home, get a better rate on a car. That's his number one step. Number two for him is getting your bank accounts set up right. I agree with that. For reselling, it would mean one credit card and one bank account to make it easier for your CPA. Number three, open up a 401k and investment account and learn about Roth IRA. Um, I say take it one step further and learn about SEP IRA if you're a reseller because you can put more money into that as a small business owner. Next one is figure out how much you're spending and what you do with your money. Uh, it's painful, but just that one thing, journaling what you spend money on, that'll pay off. Next is automate your infrastructure so that your accounts flow together nicely. And that makes sense. So like money comes in, where does it go after that? Automate that so you don't have to think about it. And then learn about investing and why it's not the same as picking stocks. Totally agree. Um, learning about reselling is not just buying anything, right? Uh, it's not just buying random stuff, not buying cheap stuff. It's uh, buying the right types of things and spending time investing your energy into figuring out what that is. No one is just going to tell you. It's also a moving target, meaning maybe hot right now, may not be hot in an hour. That's how fast the markets can change. Okay, six rules for credit cards. Pay off your credit cards regularly. Don't pay any interest. Get all fees waived on your credit card. He actually provides a script to do that. Negotiate a lower APR. Uh, keep your cards for a long time and keep them active. So you want a long credit history. Get more credit if you have no debt. That's, that's an interesting one, um, but it makes sense. Your credit score goes up if you have a lower utilization rate and you have like, I think at $50,000 in credit, you have a, don't quote me on that, but I think at $50,000 um, in credit or more, that's another bump in your credit score. But I use Credit Karma to uh, monitor my credit. It is not, I'm not an affiliate. I just use that and mint.com for my personal finances. Um, and then use your rewards as you get them, meaning um, this is just like you can maximize your rewards by purchasing gift cards for things that you're already going to buy. That's like another hack related to that. And as a reseller, you can also get better deals, let's say 10% off something that you were going to buy to resell. That all adds up. So make sure that you use your rewards properly. And then on average, according to Ramit Sethi, millionaires invest 20% of their income each year. I bet it's um, feels like it's higher than that. Like when I see, um, maybe they mean 20% of their gross income before tax. That would make more sense. Meaning if you got paid 100, after tax you get paid 65, 20 of that is being invested. That makes more sense to me than uh, if you net 65 and you only invest 12, 20% of that. Because I'm seeing a lot of millionaires investing 50% of their income or at least young millionaires. So um, that makes sense. If you want to be an average millionaire, 20%, but if you want to be a young millionaire, invest more than that. Uh, frugality isn't about spending on everything. I'm sorry. Frugality isn't about cutting your spending on everything. Remit's sort of famous for saying, buy as many lattes as you want. It doesn't matter. $3 a day doesn't matter. Like increase your income $100 a day. How about that? And have your latte in the morning. Uh, makes sense. You can't do that with everything, but he's just saying, we're geared for coffee. We live in a fast-paced world, and the first thing I think about when I wake up is coffee. You're going to um, make your own? Sure, but again, that's, that $3 investment is not, or I mean, expense is not going to prevent you from becoming a millionaire, but not increasing your ability at work, not getting raises, not getting paid more, that will severely handicap you. Even Dave Ramsey, who says you should live on rice and beans, says that your number one wealth building tool is your income. Okay, so I think everyone is really on the same page. Don't just save, save for a goal, is what Ramit says. Um, I agree. Hard to save money without where it's going to end up being. Next is uh, set up automation so that money goes straight to your investments without you seeing it. 
Totally agree. If someone were to cut your paycheck in half, you would just figure out how to live on that half usually. Um, and then finally, he says buy index funds, not individual stocks. Uh, I'm starting down that road too with VTSAX or VTSAX, however you want to say it, Vanguard as a uh, tool to um, passively invest without doing too much research. Because as you know, I know many of you are busy already with kids and reselling. You may not be doing a ton of investment in the time for your investments. But again, if you look at the millionaire behavior, 20% of their income is going into this investment bucket and millionaires probably are better off at least having a, uh, a literacy of what they're investing in versus just letting a fund, um, like a company, manage your money and take those fees out regardless of your portfolio is doing well or not. So um, last thought is... Um, I think the worst possible advice for reselling is uh, sell everything. I'm going to um, make a separate video on that. And if you guys are enjoying this content, please smash the like button. But I think the first thing you should do is sell what you have, then sell what you like, then maybe go after selling everything. Because like that's not good advice because you can't get good at a specific niche. So. Thanks guys for stopping by and I will see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.